funny. I think uh, being a parent in some ways has prepared me for this duality, right? Because I, I would argue it's a balance and that it's important even as an authority, whether it's with your children or in your workplace or both, it's important to maintain beginner's mind and openness as much as possible, even as you rely on your experience and your authority. Um, I think we've all probably been in workplaces where someone has said, but that's the way we've always done it as an excuse not to make a change when a change was probably necessary or would be helpful. And um, it makes sense because change is uncomfortable, right? We often resist it because it's uncomfortable. And frankly, uncertainty, not having all the answers is uncomfortable. It feels so much better to be confident when you know everything, <laughs> right. but we don't. And I think, you know, in a professional setting, it's important to value expertise and experience, but it's also important to value um, adaptability and flexibility and innovation and imagination and all of those things that make us able to uh, change our minds maybe and take in and process new information without relying on the way we've always done it. In the arts and in our professional lives and in our personal lives, newness, right, innovation, only happens through experimentation and play. You can't get to it without trying something and maybe falling flat on your face. I mean, you have to be willing to fail and so I think part of what we need to do as adults is learn to be more like children and that we're willing to try things and not worry so much about our ego, not worry about failing and thinking that that's going to reflect poorly upon us because in order to have or make any breakthrough, personal or professional, we have to put ourselves out on a limb and it won't always work and that's okay. And so, you know, one of the ways that I've, kept myself from getting too stodgy about things is by trying to spend time with young people and glean as much as I can from their um, open and curious worldview. But I also think there are other ways to access that. And part of it is uh, finding things that bring us joy and making room to do those things in our daily lives, whether it's reading or meditation or running um, or dancing, um, whatever the thing is that makes you feel alive. Uh, I think we need to, we need to carve out space for that because I think it will help us get to that, to that mindset. I think the problem I was trying to solve was a problem of my own. <laughs> so not a problem for the reader, so to speak, but a problem in my own life. Um, as I began the project, I was writing notes to self every day, these sort of self pep talks and posting them. And the problem I was facing was really a problem of perspective, which is what do I do now? How do I keep moving forward in my life? How do I face the future with courage and positivity, even though things seem really dark and difficult right now. It was the end of my marriage. I was trying to sort of regroup. And so I was writing for myself. The strange thing that happened was that then people responded. Uh, and my hope is that now that the book is out, I've been seeing people say that they're buying it for their friends and they're buying it for their staff or their neighbors. And my hope is that it might find someone who had the problem I had when I wrote it, which is to say they don't know what's coming next for them. And maybe they're feeling fearful or insecure or worried. And maybe the book will provide some reassurance or comfort or a little shot of hope when they need it. And frankly, I think we maybe all need that right now.
I think just the the level of response to the book has been really surprising to me because it started out as a project um, that was literal self-help. Uh, I wrote the book to help myself. <laughs> so to have so many people responding to it has been really surprising. Also, I did not know when I was writing this book that it would be released during a global pandemic. And what I've been hearing from people again and again is how the book feels just right for this moment, which I could not have anticipated. But indeed, I think we are all um, sort of facing our own what now life crises right now, whether it's work related or family related or health related, um, due in large part to the pandemic. And so the, the book coming out this year honestly feels like just the right time and not something um, I could have or would have planned for. So I um, am rereading a book called The Order of Time by Carlo Rivelli. I wanted to return to this book because of the pandemic. I think we have, um, at least I have, a sort of uh, a feeling that time has gotten distorted because of all of this time that we have alone. And so I went back to this book and in uh, a certain section, he's talking about heat, which he calls the microscopic agitation of molecules. I love that as a phrase. And he writes, every time a difference is manifested between the past and the future, heat is involved, which blows my mind. Thoughts, for instance, unfold from the past to the future, not vice versa. And in fact, thinking produces heat in our heads. I love that. I wrote a poem that appears in my last book, Good Bones, uh, about how the future is empty. It was inspired by a question that my daughter Violet asked me in the car when she was three years old. And her question was, what is the future? The poem is called Future. Everything that hasn't happened yet. The future is tomorrow and next year and when you're old, but also in a minute or two when I'm through answering. The future is nothing I imagined as a child, no jetpacks, no conveyor belt sidewalks, no bell jarred cities at the bottom of the sea. The trick of the future is that it's empty, a cup before you pour the water. The future is a waiting cup, and for all it knows, you'll fill it with milk instead. You're thirsty. Every minute carries you forward, conveys you into a space you fill. I mean, the future will be full of you. It's one step beyond the step you're taking now. What you'll say next until you say it 